Topless Baker, and on this week's episode... Hey, 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 hey! I just went to the bathroom and you'd, you've already started the video without me. You've gone for so long, I thought I might as well start. I invited Georgia in for a collab and she's already taken over the channel. Yeah. Well sorry. guys, this is Georgia from Georgia's Cakes uh, and we're doing an amazing collab today but she's taken over the channel apparently. But thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Super excited. Georgia and I are like besties from Tastemade and Instagram and Georgia is we're an amazing... Cake buddies. Yeah, cake buddies. <laughs> cake decorator, cake business owner, Instagrammer, YouTuber. Everything. She's amazing. You should check her out. Her channel is on the screen. Her Instagram's in the description box. You gotta check it out. And today we're making something pretty impressive. Do you wanna tell mm. them what we're making? It's gonna be, well, I, I actually don't know what it's called. It's like a crook and bouche cake mixed together. So like caramelized profiteroles stacked up and it's gonna look awesome. It's gonna be like pastry, cake, caramel, sugar. It's it's going to be delicious. Everything that's good for a January diet, basically. <laughs> exactly. Everything that is good. <laughs> so we're starting with shoe pastry. And actually last night we made a lot of shoe pastry because we were practicing. It was like 11 o'clock at night, yeah. cold, rainy London, <laughs> practicing this. But we did do it. So I know the technique, but I'm going to let you tell us what we've got to do. Okay. So even though it's pastry, it's actually the weirdest pastry recipe. Right. We start off with boiling water and butter and then chuck in some flour and mix it all together. Okay, so, let's do that then. So now it's boiling, I'm gonna take it off the heat and we're gonna chuck the flour straight in. Do you wanna do that? Yes, I will do the flourage. All in one. All in one. And, and then start mixing. Use your muscles, <laughs> start mixing. And you're basically cooking out that flour, right? Because at the moment it's... Oops, a little also bit, chucking, little out bit, chucking out the flour. <laughs> chucking out the flour. You're like cooking it out, right? Am I exactly. right in saying that? Yeah, otherwise yeah. you get not a very nice taste to the eclair and it needs to be a specific consistency. Exactly. It's not an eclair, it's a shoe bun. It's a shoe bun, but it's kind of the same recipe. Same thing. So if you think it's gonna need some cooking out, just put it back on the heat and do a few more turns until it really starts becoming loose on the pan. So if you can kind of chuck it around in the pan like that, it's done. It's done. So when it's floppy. Then you can put it into another bowl weirdest consistency. Such an odd consistency. <laughs> and then we're going to add the eggs. Yeah, but before we do that, oh. we want to cool this down. So I'm going to spread it up the sides. So it's good to have a big bowl for this. So you're going to cool it down because if we add it when it's, if we add the eggs when it's hot, the eggs are basically going to scramble. Exactly. And this cools it down quicker instead of it being in a clump. Right, that's definitely reduced in temperature. So we can pour the eggs in. Right. Now I'm not going to go in all at once, just half the amount. Okay. And you can do this bit because I really hate it's the texture of it. It's very weird. <laughs> so I'm going to scrape down the sides to get all that cooled patachou off the bottom. And then I'm just going to give it a mix until all that egg is kind of incorporated and it doesn't look all curdled. All right, so the first half of egg's been incorporated. It's Much. not there yet. We'll go in with another half. And the idea with doing this in stages is just to ensure it all mixes in evenly because if you go in all at once with the egg, it is really difficult it's to do really this It's really difficult bit. to do it. Okay, so you just do it in stages. Yeah, make all life right. easier for yourself. Make life easier. So this is all mixed now. And actually, I had a question for Georgia last night because I'm not very good at making profiteroles and I never know when I've added enough egg. You can see we haven't added all the egg. So yeah, why so don't you tell them the tip to know when you've added enough so egg? It's called dropping consistency. And if you've ever heard that and you're like, what does that mean? It means if you do this, it needs to drop within three seconds. Boom, on the three. So that was three, exactly. If it's still holding there, then add slightly more egg. If it's running off the spoon, you might want to start again. <laughs> so but that's important. Is... So don't add all your egg at once. You just want to keep adding it a little bit until you exactly. get to that three second One, drop. two, three. On the three, it, <laughs> it plops. plopped as yes. well. Right, we can um, pipe these. Yeah. They're ready to be piped. Let's pipe. So we've got our shoe pastry in a piping bag with a round nozzle, a little round nozzle. And now we're going to do the pipe and whip to pipe our little, I call them cream puffs, but profiteroles. Yeah. Do you want to show us, show us the technique? Right. So you can kind of go any size, but I always compare it to a two pound coin. So like that big, maybe. So just squeeze it onto the baking tray. And then to finish it off, I do like a little circle action. A little whippage. Yeah, because otherwise you get a peak and I want to avoid that. Ooh, and try and avoid it. Okay, it doesn't matter if you get the peak, guys. <laughs> you can flatten it. Yeah. So I'm spacing them out quite a bit because they're going to puff up. Do you want to have a go? Oh. Pressure, pressure. <laughs> See, that was like a macaron whip. That's what I was quite <laughs> jealous of, how well you did that. 
Oh. Yeah, you got the action. We are done piping. We actually only needed one tray. We were going to double the Ignore batter. That. Ignore that tray. Um, and one, Georgia has just mentioned a very good tip. So some of these are a bit peaky, mm -hmm. but you can solve the peaks, yes. right? With that little bit of leftover egg, just dip your finger in and just pat the peaks down just like this and it will go away before you put them in the oven. Okay, so Genius. it stops them from like peaking in the oven. And then they go in the oven now at about 180, yeah, 350. 180, yeah. yeah. Is that 350 Fahrenheit? I think so, yeah, if I converted it right, about <laughs> that. And then we're just going to cook them until they're golden brown. Mm -hmm. So they'll puff up, they'll go golden brown and sound hollow on the inside as well. Okay. Should we put them in? Let's go. Okay, so these are the ones that we just cooked. Mm. We've taken them out of the oven. They baked very well, didn't they? Very well. Very we have let them cool them. as well. You're not touching a hot tray there. No, it's, <laughs> I've not got steel hands. That's good, good point, because often people ask that. And just in case you wondered, we did make more yesterday. I said we met yesterday. We made another batch yesterday. So don't worry, the recipe in the description box, you'll have enough to make all of these. And we've started yeah. filling them as well. What have we gone for? So we've gone for a Chantilly cream, is that what it's called? So yep. whipped cream with a bit of icing sugar and some vanilla. We've also filled some with Nutella, obviously, because it's absolutely delicious. But the idea is to just get a sweet filling because these aren't so sweet themselves. You only put a pinch of sh sugar in, don't we? Yep. So a sweet filling goes really, really nicely with them. So what we've done is poked a hole in the bottom and you just get your piping bag and fill it up. Squeeze it up. Squeeze it up, squeeze it up. Oh, until it starts to come out the end. And that's how you know how it's full as well. Easy. So I'm gonna add that to my pile. Okay, so we have filled them all, not resisted, we've resisted eating them basically. <laughs> that's, yeah. This is a real struggle. And now, just to finish it, there's one basic element left, which is the caramel. Yeah, because so this is what it's going to build the cake crock and bouche thing we're making. And it's going to hold it all together and harden. And it adds that extra sweetness and extra crisp. And it looks amazing. Okay, let's put this one side. We'll get on with the caramel and then we are nearly done. <laughs> all right, so we're going to make our caramel. Georgia set everything up. She's going to tell you what we've got to do. Right, so I've got sugar in the pan. And on top of the sugar, I'm going to put some water just enough to cover it. And then we add some liquid glucose. Right, and the glucose stops the sugar from crystallizing. Very important. You don't want that to happen because the sugar seizes up and you can't use it. Very important, mm -hmm. okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this to 165. Now you don't necessarily need a super duper fancy digital thermometer, but you can't do this by eye. You're gonna need to be able to tell the temperature. So get yourself a cheap one online. And basically, as soon as it hits temperature, we've got a bowl of ice water here. And Georgia is going to dunk the pan, which is going to shock the pan, which stops the caramel from cooking. Exactly, because it's so hot, it's going to keep cooking itself. So the ice water stops that process. And then we can start dipping our profiteroles. Perfect. Right, so we've dipped it. It's cold. I'm going to move this bowl out of the way. I'm going to get the profiteroles, because you need to start working pretty quickly here now. Exactly. The you caramel will stay liquid, but it will start to harden. So in the event that it does harden, what you can do is reheat it, right? Yeah, very slowly. And then if it does completely crystallize, just make it again. It doesn't take too long. <laughs> so we've got two non-stick cake tins here with loose bottoms. And we're just going to dip these profiteroles and stick them all around the inside. Yes. Um, but we also don't want to dip that side because we don't want the filling. So we want the outer coating like that and then placed it inside the tin, facing out, so you get a nice caramel edge. So, getting a nice coverage of caramel on the sides as well to make them stick. And I'm going on a second layer of profiteroles to make it nice and tall. So, we have finished filling our tins now with our profiteroles. And you had to work quite quickly. We actually had to heat up a little bit more caramel just because it cooled. But one thing to do, another tip, is once we filled it up, we then just drizzled some extra caramel kind of through the gaps and over the middle. Just to act kind of the extra glue, right? Yeah, the caramel sets so hard, it hardens and holds it all together really nicely. So we've got and some little extra bits in there. And this is set within about five minutes yeah. of finishing. So we're ready to now release it. And we haven't released it yet, <gasps> so we're both very nervous as to whether this is going to work. Because right. if it doesn't, you haven't got a YouTube video to watch. <laughs> right, so we're just going to put... Oh, Ooh, oh. it's working. Oh, look at that. Okay. So you see why the non-stick pans are a must. Look at those. So we've got two walls. Yes. Look. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flip them onto cake boards and then we're going to start 
Stacking them? I guess so. All right, now for the top. Fingers crossed. <gasps> yes! Got it! Look <laughs> at that. From Google Images to our kitchen. <laughs> so happy it worked. But what I'm going to do, just for extra structure, I've still got some spare caramel here. And I think I'm just going to drizzle a bit on the top. What do you think? Yes, definitely. We need the structure. Perfect. And then we can also stick the top tier to this as well. Yes, I love it. Nice, and I'll also save this for last minute decorations. Very important, very important. So now we're taking mine and we're going to drop it on. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> you can do this. Here we go. But oh. is it going to hold? Is it going to hold? So we've got both of our stacks on now. We're both like breathing Ooh. in deep relief. <laughs> and. To finish it off, we've still got this caramel that's left from earlier and it's slightly cool. It's cooler. Right? Yeah, it's cool. It's still hot because it's runny, um, but it's the perfect consistency to do some fun decorations with. And okay. I think I'm just going to do like a big whirl around the whole thing. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. So it like stretches. Oh, wow. And it just wraps it in this beautiful nest. Exactly. That's the idea. Let's go again. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. And that actually makes it a lot neater as well. It does. Ooh. So if you've got any gaps or anything, that nest just helps to tidy things up. Oh, genius, Georgia. <laughs> Who knew? So this is also the same consistency if you want to make sugar spirals and stuff like that. Wow, so that has turned out a lot better than I was expecting. Yes, thank <laughs> goodness. Look at it though. It's cool, I'm really impressed. I love the caramel. How You're used looks. to making cakes and this is mm. quite different for the both of us probably. I know, it's very fun. But to finish it off, I mean, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can put more sugar decorations on or, I don't know, pipe some details. Okay. But I've got these really cute rosebuds, which Ooh. I haven't actually used before. Um, I found them in a random shop. Um, but they look really pretty. And I've also got some sugar flowers. And again, you can make some yourself. Or if buy you're them online. <laughs> buy them online, maybe a little bit um, of a better idea. So but it's just a, it's a good color, I think, because it's quite yeah. dark. A white and a pink makes it pop. Breaks it up, yeah. exactly. So all let's right. just put these in randomly. Then, gonna, all right, let's start with the rose and okay. then I can finish off with that. So I'm just going to find any little gaps I can and just pop them in, trying not to break the beautiful cage that Georgia created. And that I'm also breaking. Yes. <laughs> and now I've got this white orchid. Directly into a profiterole, kind of wedge it in. Stick it on there. Hopefully it <gasps> stays. Nice, we, we did, did it. High five, high five. Yes. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Wow. I Amazing. Mean, we're used to making cakes, so this is like yeah. another level. This is another level. We've taken patisserie and cake and made a baby. Pacis caterie. <laughs> I made that word up. Well, thank you so much for coming, Georgia. Oh. Guys, you've got to subscribe to Georgia's YouTube channel. Check her out on Instagram, unbelievable. And if you're in London and you need a crazy cake, delicious cake. Head my she's way. She's the one that's going to hook you up. Um, so, yeah, I will see you guys next week for more, you know, dietary goodness that's, you know, really, you know, going to make you nice and healthy for January. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, ready? But you don't need to go back because we're Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, uh, I've got a meat cleaver out. I don't want to break the cake stand though, as well. Won't break the cake stand. No? Okay. Now do it, come on, give it some... <laughs> I, was, on. I was aiming my shot. Yeah, okay, you're ready? aiming your shot, come on, ready? Oh! <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> so good. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Do you want to do this? <laughs> oh, I've got a rose, I don't really want to. Mmm, guess I'm seeing the dentist tomorrow. <laughs>